body bags were whore lies. Who is this irresistible creature who has an insatiable love for the dead? Hey guys, happy Thursday. This is your Fright Chick speaking. Okay, so this week I am doing a film that... I can't believe we haven't done, but I've started watching a new TV show called The Strain and it immediately made me think of this. 28 days later. So yeah, I actually prefer 28 weeks later. I don't know if that's a controversy or where far, but I do. But I'm going to do 28 days later because we haven't done either of them. I should start with the first one. So this came out in 2002. It is a British movie, obviously. I'm sure most people have actually seen it, but for those of you that haven't, you are missing out because this is a great film. It's directed by Danny Boyle, who famously did the Olympics. Um, so yes, we open with, I never know how to say his name. It's Killian Murphy or Silly. I think it's Killian Murphy. He is our lead. He plays a guy called Jim. So we have an opening scene, like first five minutes, which is um, a group of activists are breaking into a sort of a research facility i recognize a lot of uh, famous british faces in this that i don't think americans might recognize but a lot of people in this are actually like the scientist at the very beginning he's been a lot of tv and stuff like that so anyways he's playing the scientist and uh, the activists break in and they are basically going to free all the chimps because they're being tested on and it's it's complete cruelty but when they do, the scientist comes out and warns them that they can't be let out because they've been infected with only what he can describe as rage. They are infected chimps and they're going to they're gonna kill you and they're going to spread something nasty. So they don't listen to him and of course they don't listen to him and they break one of them out and straight away it goes for the girl that's with them and infects her. She gets infected extremely quickly, she's puking blood, it's disgusting. And then she infects her two other activist friends and the scientist tries to contain it but it doesn't work this leads us into our next scene where we meet jim he literally wakes up in a hospital bed he's been in a coma he's been in a coma for exactly 28 days hence the term 28 days later he's been in a coma the entire time so at this point in the movie it was 28 days ago that the activists did their thing and the virus has ravaged the population he wakes up completely unaware of what's happened. He doesn't even know why there's no one in this hospital. He's walking around. He has no clue why it's all deserted. He goes out into the street and starts wandering through London. Quite, I think there's quite um, uh, obvious landmarks. He walks past like Tower Bridge, sort of all that sort of stuff, you know. Um, it was really interesting because obviously um, they filmed it really early in the morning. I think it was like four in the morning. They shut the roads down for like 20 minutes to get the takes they could. Um, being from London and knowing it as well as I do, it is extremely freaky to watch that scene where he is walking through parts of London where it's debris blown everywhere, rubbish, nobody on the streets, nobody on the bridge. Like, to look at these landmarks with no one around them is insane. I've never seen that. That's impossible. That can't happen. So, well done them for actually going the extra mile to get that kind of shot in this film because it does make it so much more believable it's just insane it's insane so he's wandering around for a bit um there's a great soundtrack to this movie which is playing in the background at this point but it's a brilliant theme um and he comes across a church he goes in he sees a priest and he tries to call for help but then they turn around and they are infected people now one of the reasons why this one did really revamp zombies is because a lot of zombie movies especially up to this point not all but most of the mainstream ones their zombies were either slow or stupid or just you know done to death these zombies are fucking badass they are i mean these zombies in this film can run faster than you they are just scary as shit to look at there's so much blood and just gunk and everything to make them even more disgusting looking even though they don't necessarily have to have bits of flesh hanging off they're not decomposing they just look like they're on serious roid rage it's amazing because if you saw that kind of a zombie running towards you i would probably die of a heart attack before it even got to me it's amazing and they just grunt as well it's great so obviously he gets attacked by a couple of zombies and he starts running around he eventually finds um two people called selena and mark they are non-infected they grab him and they help keep him safe they take him back to their hideout in the underground 
and explain to him what's happened. So they explain, you know, this has happened, everyone's dead, <laughs> it's all fucked. Um, and they kind of relate their stories of where they were when the um, when the outbreak happened, which is great. Um, and they also explain that if you do get a little bit of blood or anything like that in your system, then you have got about 10 or 20 seconds. So it's not even like where most zombie films that are quite popular would take a few days or even just like overnight or something. It is instant. And that's great because that ramps up the fear factor a bit more because it's like, holy shit, you know, it's not like they can just hide it. It's, it happens right then and there. And they they explain all this to him. He's He can't get his head around it, but he takes them to his parents' house. He wants to know what happened to his family. He goes to his house and realises that his parents committed suicide because they didn't want to die that way. They left him a note basically saying, if you ever wake up and find this note, we love you, etc, etc. So they spend the night at his house and he stupidly leaves a light out, like a candle, and in, attracts a load of infected they attack the house. We lose one of them. We lose Mark. Um, he he's not exactly a big player in this, so it's not really a huge loss or a big spoiler. He's not a big player in this movie. We lose Mark, but th once again, the intensity of the movie because when he does get infected, Selena is just. They've clearly bonded these two, Selena and Mark, over the course of the last twenty-eight days. She just hacks him to shit. She's like, "That you're infected," and he's like, "No, no, wait." But she just takes him out and it's brilliant because it is just survival straight away you know fuck the fact that i know you you're, you're gonna kill me and you're gonna do it pretty fucking soon in like less than a minute and she just takes him out it's amazing so jim and selena make their way across london again and we come across two more survivors we have hannah who's a teenage girl and we have her dad called frank who's a bit of a ray winston type it's not ray winston in this movie I don't think he's very recent in this movie, but he could be his twin. Um, and they are living in a high rise. Um, they have managed to block the ground floor, like where the car park is. They've blocked the entrance out, but they have left like signal, like lights and things, so that if there are other survivors, they can find them. Because obviously, you know, the infected are just running on rage, but people still know how to climb something intricate and actually find their way in, even though the infected chase after them and pretty much get up there too. But still. So they manage to get into their high-rise flat and it's all a bit awkward because, you know, it's like, oh, we have guests here, Try, trying to keep that normality a little bit, even though the world's gone to shit, as far as you're concerned. Um, they all decide they need to make their way to Manchester. This is about halfway through. This is the midpoint of the movie where we kind of get out of London. They have um, an old broadcast saying, from a military um, operation up there, saying, we have the answer to the infection, you need to come to us. So they basically get in Frank's black cab that he drives, and they make a journey to Manchester. Along the way, you know, you get to see infected people dying and, and, and like, just devastation here and there. Um, it's quite sad when it's your own country and you know those sorts of places and you see them kind of, you know, desecrated. It is horrible. Um, but they make their way to Manchester and then it kind of, the rest of the movie is like its own separate entity, you know, this like, that was the first half, now we're getting into the second act. Because um, he has played the, the major or so, whoever the, the head of this you know, military operation is, um, it's basically just a platoon, it's it's a, what do you call it, like a squadron, it's a squadron of soldiers um, who have holed themselves up in what I think was like a sort of a stately home. And he is played by Christopher Eccleston, who a lot of you will know. He has actually broken America. He was uh, the Doctor before David Tennant. I don't know which number. I don't actually watch Doctor Who. Um, he was also in Heroes as Claude Rains, Invisible Man. He, His answer to infection is basically female survivors that we can impregnate and waiting for the infected to starve to death. He has a theory that they will starve to death and any females are welcome. And we have two in our group. <laughs> and it's just not good. Because uh, we lose one of them along the way. We lose one of our survivors along the way. But Jim and Selena and Hannah, who... Ugh, it means that Frank's gone. I didn't really want to say it, but it's pretty fucking obvious who went if I say the three that survived. <laughs> so we have Frank and Selena and Hannah, and they get there. And everything seems kind of funky-dory at first because they think they're going to be safe now. But it becomes very like quickly apparent that those are his true intentions so jim is ostracized straight away because he is not going to allow that to happen the girls can't really do anything about it they're overpowered by like eight big soldier guys and um, they also have one who was infected that they're keeping for observation because they want to see how long it's going to take him to starve to death so that they can gauge the rest of the population um 
and that's kind of how it goes for like the last half hour so we've got about 15 to 20 minutes before the end is when the action really kicks in because they actually decide they're going to kill Jim they're going to take him out they don't need him and he's a threat to them um, but he manages to get away from them when they're going to kill him and he kind of he kind of infiltrates the place you know it's all rainy and it's night time and they're getting they're getting ready to rape these girls you know it's just awful they dress them up and they're getting ready to rape these women and he infiltrates and he kind of he basically opens a can of worms i won't tell you exactly how everything goes down but he opens a can of worms that completely destroys this entire safe haven and it's great and then we get to the end and the ending is amazing and i won't give you the exact ending there are about three alternate endings on this um there's a couple of endings where jim dies there's a another ending where he lives there's another one where he lives and does this and there's a bunch of different ways that this film ended so you may have seen a different one from what i'm aware but the theatrical release um i think is probably the best one um but you know it's just insane like i couldn't help but feel extremely sad at the end of this film anyway because even though there is a happy ending and then there's a sad ending and all this they all end where you just go oh my god just i it because it's not over hence why we had 28 28 weeks later <laughs> but yeah um i didn't really want to say absolutely every little nitty gritty thing about this film because you should have a little bit of surprise i know it's a review and i'm supposed to review the whole thing but i did you got it all you opened a can of worms at the end and shit went down and it's awesome it's a brilliant film the score is amazing um, it looks good. The acting was great. Um, there, there was, obviously, in a lot of these movies, especially when you see the trailer, they always show the two leads kiss at some point in the trailer. Um, there is a romantic thing going on in this, but it's so far below the bar that it's not really in your face. You don't really wait for it, or you're not really looking at it, but it's more the bonding, you know, that's going on, and you just think, I, and you sort of, at the end, you just go, I really hope they got together. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's nice. It's just there. Right, I'm going to end this now and I will see you next week. Probably with 28 weeks later if someone doesn't beat me to it. Bye.